Statistical ideas and methods are used in almost every aspect of human activity. Statistics has special applications in such areas as medicine, psychology, education, engineering, and agriculture. In business, statistical method methods are applied extensively in production, marketing, finance, and accounting. Business statistics is the systematic process of collecting, interpreting, and presenting numerical data about business situations. In business, statistics is organized into two categories, descriptive and statistical inference. Descriptive statistics deals with tabular, graphical, or numerical methods for organizing and summarizing information. Whereas statistical inference is the process of arriving at conclusions, predictions, forecasts, or estimates based on a sample drawn from the population of all data under consideration. For example, a company may contact a randomly selected sample of 250 customers and ask their opinion about a possible new product. From this sample, the company will try to infer information about the opinions of the entire population of prospective customers. For this presentation, we will concentrate on various types of descriptive statistical methods. Let's start with tables. A table is a collection of related data arranged for ease of reference or comparison, usually in parallel columns with meaningful titles. Tables are very useful in summarizing statistical data and are found almost everywhere in business. Once the data has been obtained from the table, they can be compared with other table data by arithmetic or percentage analysis. Charts are used to display a picture of the relationships among selected data. A line chart shows data changing over a period of time. A single glance at a line chart gives the viewer a general idea of the direction or trend of the data, up, down, or up and down. The horizontal axis, or x-axis, is used to measure units of time, such as days, weeks, months, or years, whereas the vertical axis, or the y-axis, depicts the magnitude, such as dollars or production in units. Frequently, the y-axis is used to measure the percentage of something. Bar charts represent quantities or percentage by length of horizontal or vertical bars. As with line charts, bar charts often illustrate increases or decreases in magnitude of a certain variable or the relationship between similar variables. Bar charts may or may not be based on the movement of time. Bar charts are divided into three categories, standard, comparative, and component. The pie chart is a circle divided into sections representing the component parts of a whole. The whole, 100%, is the circle. The parts are the wedge-shaped sections of the circle. When this type of chart is used, the data are usually converted to percentages. The size of each section of the circle is determined by the portion or percentage each component is of the whole. Pie charts are generally read by inspection because each component of the data is clearly labeled by category and percent. A numerical average is the value that is representative of a whole set of values. In business, managers use averages extensively to describe or represent a variety of situations. Because an average is numerically located in the range of values it represents, averages are often referred to as measures of central tendency. In this section, we will study the three most commonly used measures of central tendency in business statistics, the mean, the median, and the mode. We will also study a measure of dispersion known as the range. The arithmetic mean corresponds to the generally accepted meaning of the word average. It is customary to abbreviate the term arithmetic mean to refer to this average simply as mean. To calculate the arithmetic mean of ungrouped data, follow these steps. Step 1. Find the sum of all the values of the data set. Step 2. Divide the sum in step 1 by the number of values in the set. This means the mean of ungrouped data equals the sum of values divided by or over the number of values. Worldwide Travel had daily sales of $4,635 on Monday, $3,655 on Tuesday, $3,506 on Wednesday, $2,870 on Thursday, $4,309 on Friday, and $5,475 on Saturday. What is the mean sales per day? To calculate the mean, or the average sales per day, we find the sum of the value of sales per day and divide this number by 6. 
you can see that we add up each of the sales figures per day to get us a total of $24,450 in sale. And then we divide this by six, which is the number of values. This gives us a mean of $4,075 per day. Another measure of central tendency and a very useful way of describing a large quantity of data is the median. The median of a set of numbers is the midpoint value when the numbers are ranked in ascending or descending order. Compared to the mean, the median is more useful in measuring central tendency when one or more of the values of the set is significantly higher or lower than the rest of the set. There are three steps to determining the median. Step 1. Rank the numbers in ascending or descending order. Step 2a. For an odd number of values, the median is the middle value. But step 2b, for an even number of values, the median is the mean of the two middle values. Determine the median for the following set of values. First, step 1, we rank the data in ascending order as follows. 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 11, 13, and 15. Step 2. Because the number of values in this set is odd, there's nine, there are four values that are less and four values that are greater than the median. Therefore, the median is the fifth value, which is eight. The mode is the third measure of central tendency that we will consider. It is the value or values in a set that occur most often. It's possible for a set of data to have more than one mode or no mode at all. To determine the mode, step one, count the number of times each value in a set occurs. Step 2a, if one value occurs more times than any other, it is the mode. Step 2b, if two or more values occur more times than any other, they are the modes of the set. Step 2c, if all values occur the same number of times, there is no mode. One common business application of mode is in merchandising, where it's used to keep track of most frequently purchased goods. The following is a great example, where we find the mode of a set of values representing the wattage of light bulbs sold at Home Depot. Here's our set of value. The solution strategy here is quite simple. From the data we see above, we see that the mode is 75 watts because the value 75 occurs most often. This indicates to the retailer that 75 watt bulbs are purchased most frequently. Although it does not measure central tendency as the mean, median, or mode do, the range is another useful measure in statistics. The range is a measure of dispersion. It's the difference between the lowest and the highest values in a data set. It is used to measure the scope or the broadness of a set of data. A small range indicates that the data in a set are narrow in scope. The values are closer to each other. A large range indicates that the data in a set of scope is wide and the values are spread far apart. Determining the range is a two-step process. Step one, locate the highest and lowest values in a set of numbers. Step two, subtract the lowest from the highest to get the range. So the range equals the highest value minus the lowest value. Determine the range for the following shirt prices from a men's shop. The solution strategy here is as follows. To determine the range of shirt prices, subtract the lowest price from the highest price. So in this case, it would be $42.50, the highest price from the lowest price, minus $14.95. This equals $27.55. Note that the range for shirts, $27.55, is relatively large. It might be said that customers are shopping in this shirt department have a wide range of prices from which to choose. Frequently, business statistics deal with hundreds, even thousands of values in a set. In dealing with such a large number of values, it's often easier to represent the data div by dividing the values into equal size groups known as classes, creating grouped data. The number of values in each class is called the frequency, with the resulting chart called the frequency distribution or frequency table. The purpose of frequency distribution is to organize large amounts of data into a more compact form without changing the essential information contained from those values. To construct a frequency distribution, step one, divide the data into equal sized classes. Be sure to use classes that indicate all values in a set. Step two, 
Use tally marks to record the frequency of values in each class. Step 3. Rewrite the tally marks for each class numerically in a column labeled Frequency F. The data is now grouped. Let's take a look at this in practice. From the following ungrouped data representing the weight of packages shipped by a manufacturer, construct a frequency distribution using classes with an interval of 10 pounds each. In our solution strategy, first we find the range of the data by subtracting the lowest value 13 from the highest value 68. This gives us a range of 55 pounds. Second, by using 10 through 19 for our lowest classes and 60 through 69 for our highest class, we include all values in the set. Class intervals of 10 pounds each allow for six equal classes. You can see them below. You can also see our tally marks and ultimately our frequency or F rankings.